Hi, and welcome to the show. You are here because you are an awesomeness junkie. You want to know what it takes to find success and take your life and your business to the next level. And in order to do so, we bring on amazing guests so we can actually dive deep into their mindsets and learn from them. What decisions did they make? How did they create amazing results and amazing levels of success in their life so we can follow in their footsteps and essentially achieve the same results. Today, I'm joined by somebody absolutely incredible. Her name is Jocelyn Duffy. She is known as the voice finder, also known as an alchemist and a catalyst. She has been helping entrepreneurs and influencers and thought leaders develop their world changing ideas um, and she actually defied death twice she fell very seriously ill but she bounced back and she still managed to create amazing results in her life let me tell you a little bit uh, about what she's managed to do so over the course of the last 20 years she has supported and collaborated with everyone from fortune 500 companies and new york times best-selling authors to brand new entrepreneurs uh, she's also a ghostwriter of 15 books and a consultant to countless others she has helped shape the messages of purpose-driven business owners across four countries with her clients have been featured everywhere from world's top lists to Oprah. She's absolutely incredible um, and she has just so much value to add. Um, I connected with her before, we had a quick chat before this call and um, she was just absolutely mind-blowing. So I couldn't wait to get her on uh, and I can't wait to dive into this conversation. So with that, Jocelyn, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure to have you on, Jocelyn. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're really busy. You've got loads, lots of things going on. Uh, you're working on multiple projects, so I really appreciate you actually being here with us today. Oh, always happy to share in conversation and great conversation at that. So thanks. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jocelyn, tell us a little bit about your story, your journey. You were ill. Uh, you fell ill twice, very, very seriously. You defied death. Um, and you were actually, you had very, uh, achieved a high level of success in the finance sector. Um, and then after that, you decided to go a different way. And now you are doing some absolutely incredible things. So talk to us, what, what did the journey look like? And what led you to actually being here today? Well, I did decide to go a different way, but I have to say that, that the universe did have quite a hand in shifting the course of my trajectory and directing me towards my vocation that found me in the process of my healing. So shifting back a little bit, say 20 years or so, um, I, I was always the driver. You know, you talk about hustle in the form that we hear it so much. I was that doer, go, 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 do, do, do. Wanted to do it all. Loving life, having a balance, but playing sports and networking and working in the financial sector. So I was swept off. Um, after graduating top of my university class um, to work for Edward Jones, one a top five Fortune 500 financial company, full service investment firm. And I was a product specialist within six months. So I cross-trained through the whole, whole organization. I was training financial advisors coast to coast on how to build stock portfolios. I was launching syndicate issues, writing national newsletters, and, and scripting broadcasts for federal level politicians, CEOs, strategists, given a lot of opportunity early on. This is like 21, 22 years of age. Wow. And so really enjoying it. I mean, fascinating people. And I mean, it's a world where when you're working in equities, you have to know everything about every company and every industry at every moment. <laughs> it's a high pressure world. Yeah. And a lot of it, you know, beyond our control as well. Um, so yeah, I worked in there. I worked in sales and marketing as well for an insurance company thereafter, a Fortune 500 firm, um, and kind of all along felt this calling that I was operating inside of a box. I was creating marketing collateral that were that were adaptively by these firms. I was writing, but I felt somewhat restricted when it came to fully express, expressing the emotional side of things and speaking mm. to our audiences in a way that my heart really wanted to. So with this kind of nudge there, it started as just a poke, a little nudge and me going, no, it's okay. I'll be happy here. I'll use my creativity elsewhere. I'll, I'll, I'll put that writing out outside of work, but the universe had different plans. And I truly believe that my falling in with a life threatening case of lupus at 26 years old with a blood clot that nearly took my life was really, uh, I can be stubborn, which is why I'm still alive, <laughs> but I can be stubborn in the sense that I could have stayed in the financial industry and been happy. Um, so I believe that's what was required to shift my course. 
Now the recovery was long and arduous. It was two years in bed. And I, I've spoken with many people and we share this commonality where the, the hits of life-threatening illness or sudden loss, if we can find a gift within it, it often is shaped by that introspection that we're given. That ability to step away from life and all the busyness and really look deeply at ourselves, our relationships to others, and the world. You start to see the synchronicities. You start to understand how things work on a deeper level. So I used those two years in bed, and I, I literally had two to three half decent waking hours a day. That's how debilitated I was in bed. Wow. But I used those few hours a day to rebuild strength. So I talk about maximizing the moments. Like, you know, when you have so few, you really learn to value every single second. So I would go out and walk and sometimes even go out and run. And I was a marathon runner prior to falling ill, but this defied what I should have been able to do based on what my body had been through. Mm -hmm. But I knew how to run. So mind over matter, I would go out and it's as though the top part of my body was asleep and my legs would just move. And they would take me and help me rebuild strength. And I had no pain, nor was I fatigued when I, when I moved, when I ran. And, and I would come home and get done everything I needed to do with that energy from the exercise. I was also writing my own story I, and I began painting as well. So that healing creative expression, self expression that really helped me through that journey. So fast forward a bit. So I've written my own stories called Unshakable to the Core. That was my first book I ever wrote. And then I, I really had this sense of pure gratitude when, you, when you've defied death or faced death and gone through something like that. Like, I literally would look up at the sky and it, it had never seemed so blue and the sun had never seemed so bright and, and children never felt so connected to me, nor did animals. Like it was amazing, the energy. Wow. So I wrote a second book called The Good News Report and it was just slightly fictional. But what I did was I took the stories of 25 people I've met who are living their lives with real passion and purpose and I wrote their story about how I saw their beauty and their potential and what they were contributing to the world and I gifted them their chapters. It wasn't designed to be, you know, to make a lot of money, to be out there. It was a gift to others. What I didn't see coming is what in gifting those chapters, I ended up with four book deals. Oh, wow. A lot of those contributors were internationally renowned speakers who were friends of mine. And so they asked me to write their books, a lot of which were autobiographies and memoirs mixed with their life strategies, their business principles that they were sharing. So 15 books later, I've never asked for a book deal. So my vocation, which initially began as a ghostwriter, but there are so many layers to that. It's consulting and coaching and helping people fully express and make their contribution to humanity. Yeah. Um, so that vocation found me in the process of my healing. So it really was a beautiful gift. There's a balance between listening to how the universe is directing us and accepting that we head in that direction. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. That's a powerful story. That's a really powerful story. Um, so many amazing things you mentioned there about living in alignment, about, you know, uh, valuing all, all the moments um, yeah. and how you get a different perspective when you go through certain difficulty in life. And obviously you, you actually faced, you know, uh, essentially death in the face and you bounce back. And I think that is a really, really powerful message. You did not give up at any stage. You were, you talk about still going and running. I mean, that's incredible, <laughs> right? That's absolutely crazy. Some might call it crazy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. It, it sounds, it sounds a bit crazy. Like really seriously, you were out running. That's, that's incredible. Um, yeah, but, but you use what you know, Talon, those experiences where you're facing such challenge or adversity, you mm -hmm. need to tap into what you know you are able to do right? You know, whether it's move, whether it's create, whatever it is that you know how to innately do, or you've been trained to do over the years, use that as fuel to rebuild the strength and get you through it. And not just through it, but to transform that adversity, right? Mm. Because I do believe that everything we experience, I say, love your mountains, love your mountains, right? Those adverse experiences, there, there are gifts within that. And we have so much that we can contribute and teach each other mm. because of what we've live through yeah yeah oh wow I, I i love the fact you know when you talk about transforming that adversity i think that's really powerful and also using that adversity as fuel and my question to the audience is what kind of adversities are you going through right now where you can use that as fuel 
to transform that adversity into something more meaningful, more impactful, where you are making a bigger contribution to something. And I think Jocelyn's story is absolutely phenomenal. And thank you for sharing that. But, you know, how, how did you actually get into that mindset where you were able to use it as fuel, where you were able to actually drive forward and achieve that transformation? Yeah, for me, well, it's, it's mentioned being stubborn, and that's part of it. <laughs> right. I mean, the, our minds are so powerful, you know, mm -hmm. as is, and there's a lot of energy usage there. I, I actually was trained as a Reiki master as well, and you use that energy to heal. So when you can, you know, be in this place, even when you're de dealing with pain, whether it's physical pain, emotional pain, and use that space that you've been given, you're, you, you're taken away from everything you know, you know, whether it's your regular job, commitments, everything else, you're drawn away. You can use that space to visualize and envision and create, you know, and shape a, a new reality or a better reality. It's hard in that moment. So it's, it's a balance between being in that moment, being real about the pain. You know, I, I, we do have to deal with that pain and that grief and that shock and everything we go through as human beings. Yeah. But also balance that with this vision that draws you forward. So I think I always had that and had this stubborn determination that I was going to be alive mm -hmm. because I was actually told two years ago that I was going to die on a separate occasion. Wow. Right. And just said, well, that's not going to work for me. You know, and I believe there's such power in this. It, it is a choice. Every moment in our lives is a choice, right? A choice to transform what we have at our hands and in front of us and to create something from it. My work as a communication and contribution strategist is helping people extract from their experiences and contribute that forth. Like I believe that we teach what we learn and that's the most powerful form of contribution. We forget about this, mm. right? So if you can be seated in this experience, obviously if you're dealing with the loss of a loved one, you need time to heal from that. But when you reach this point that you're ready to kind of begin moving forward, Something incredible happens when you look at your experiences and you're able to take that, not only the story, but the strategies that you use personally to help rebuild strength, to help get back into the world, even if you're still in the middle of the process and begin helping others, that will help you through it. Mm. So there's such power in being a contributor and through our communication, it's such an easy way to contribute. You don't have to go to start a business around this. You can start to blog. Right? We each have this ability to do this so easily. And there's such a healing factor involved when you're able to share what you've been through in a really authentic way and the strategies that you learned. That's so important. And it was a story plus strategy. Because you, know, you, you tell a powerful personal story and you inspire your audience. But when you yeah. tell strategy with the story, the impact is reciprocal. So the strategy amplifies the magnitude of the story. The story amplifies the magnitude of the strategy. Right. Okay. So it, and when you can look back at your personal experiences and, and really say, like, what did I do? It helps you gain a sense of appreciation and confidence. And I know you and I talked about confidence a lot. Yeah. And how do we build that? Like, mm -hmm. I think we need to self-observe and look at, like, holy crap, I did that. I got from that painful point A to today. I did that. I didn't yeah. know that I could do it mm -hmm. two months ago, a year ago, two years ago. 10 years ago and here i am right appreciate what you've created in your life right and then go forth and share that because there's someone else who's at that period where you were who needs your help right so I, that's why i believe that our communication can be our contribution wow yeah so wow really powerful stuff there i was getting chills seriously i was getting <laughs> chills i was speaking to you listening to you right there it was amazing the the story plus strategy and and the link that you established there between communication and healing um i i think that's really really powerful and also really unique i've never thought about it that way and, and that's i i think you're on to something there i want to dig deep there i think that's that's really powerful so yeah you talk about the fact that with communication, you, you can almost achieve that healing because you are sharing your own experiences. You're, um, you know, talking about your strategy and your story in, in the, in your communication and through your communication, you make a contribution. So can you go dig a little bit deeper there and talk to us about how is that lead? How does that lead to healing? And more specifically, how did that lead? lead to healing in your case 
Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd love to share. And I love to speak about Viktor Frankl. And if you haven't mm -hmm. read Man's Search for Meaning, go read it. It's one of the first books I ever read in terms of the spiritual and personal development realm. But meaning making, that's why this is so powerful. Even when our experiences don't make sense, we can create meaning from them. Mm -hmm. I say that again. Even when our experiences don't make sense, we can create meaning from them. Wow. Did it make sense that I faced life-threatening illness twice before the age of 36? No. Would never wish it upon anyone. Have I created meaning from it? Hell yes. <laughs> you know, an entire vocation, a purpose, a calling where I'm able to help other people do the yeah. same, extract from their experiences through these powerful messages, models, and methodologies that are shifting the status quo and changing humanity on a global level. Mm. So that's what this is about is that if you can look back at your experiences and begin to share them, and you don't have to say, oh, I see one, two, three, four, five. That's exactly what I did. It's clear as day. It's not always going to be that easy, right? But when you start to talk about it, you start to share it in blogs, you start to have discussions about it. You know, use people as your mirror. You know, as a ghostwriter, that's what I am to other people. I'm reflecting what you're telling me, but sometimes what you're telling me and share it back with you. So that's what we can do for others. And that's what others will do for you is they will tell you your own beauty, your own strength, your own power. So start to appreciate that and then go and teach that, right? You don't have to be a teacher. <laughs> I know, you know, the world of teaching, but we are all teachers and we're all students. So allow yourself to be a student of life and to learn from your experiences in a way that you go and contribute that forth as a teacher. We all have that capacity and we all have that audience waiting for us. Whether it's a hundred people, a hundred thousand or a hundred million, we all have an audience. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. talked about too, like communication as contribution. I believe this is where we're shifting because if we look at the knowledge economy and even in the industrial economy before that with our hands, now we're working with our heads. It's very much been about, I want to tell you something. That's our communication model. The yeah. sender, the coding, the message, the decoding, the receiver, right? That's our standard model. I've created a new model. We're moving into what, what has been dubbed the human economy, also the network economy. There's different names for it. But it's about thinking not only the needs of the individual. I'm, I'm very much about, yes, we each need to self-express, to heal, to have a purpose, to have a mission. Absolutely. But serving that in a way that addresses the needs of humanity as a whole. So it's no longer about, I need to communicate to get my message across. It's, I need to communicate to help humanity. Now, whether you serve your family, your company, your community, or humanity, every place is important and, and do what's most comfortable for you. You know, some of us want to go out and change the world and that's great. Some of us want to help at our family level and that's equally as important. We need people operating at every level and communicating at every level. Beautiful. Jocelyn, I, I've, had the pleasure of you know um, connecting with and interviewing many great people on the channel, um, but there there are very few times where I've had the experience where I've literally got chills running through my body as I'm ha you know having a conversation, and that's happening right now. So it's a very 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 special conversation, uh, and for the audience as well. You know, you, I, I in the previous interviews as well, I always talk about the fact that if, if moments like this come up. Um, like I actually get chills running through my, down my body because the what the messages that are being shared, um, it, it's absolute gold. It's so powerful that it literally is life changing, and this is the conversation I've, I've been having chills <laughs> as I'm sitting here. Yeah. So powerful. Um, but you you again, I, I want to go down you know, a slightly different angle, but you talk about the fact that moments are choices. Like you have a choice in every single moment and it's for most people, they miss that. They completely miss the fact that you have a choice in every moment because they think that things are happening to them each moment. They don't have a choice. They can't do anything about it. So how, how did you actually find out that you do have a choice to make in each moment? You can, you know, give meaning to it, the, the meaning that you choose. I love how you phrase that. It leads me to like, we don't need to find out that we need, that we can make a choice. We just need to make a choice, mm. right? Life is going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm actually writing a book about all this. There's so many things in our world that are happening. 
that are going to be, on, be beyond comprehension of our human minds. There always will be. Terrorism, war, the loss of a loved one. There's you know, illness when you're doing everything by the book to treat your body great. You know, it, things are not going to make sense in our yeah. lives. It doesn't mean we can't create meaning. And yes, it's just, it's just the flip of the switch. It's the choice to say, I'm going to rise. I'm going to rise above this. I'm going to not only overcome, like we have to take, it's, I call it compassion and small action, right? You have to take the small steps. It's not just going to be like, I'm just going to transform it tomorrow, right? Allow yourself to feel the emotions, to work through the process. But the communication is so healing. Share in that conversation, share what you're learning, share what you're feeling, ask questions, you know, help. If you're working with clients as an entrepreneur, get your clients to solve this problem with you. Right, because that bond that you create together when you do so is incredible. Wow, yeah, absolutely. So, Jocelyn, at the moment, you're helping entrepreneurs, um, you know, find their message, and you're t helping them with their, uh, you know, essentially come up with a strategy on how they can share their story, how they can communicate, um, and your you you got coaching clients. So, how did that? transition because obviously you were you're talking about the fact that you got you know deals on writing books how did that transition into actually helping entrepreneurs with their business well it's always been a part of the process so i've never been solely right. a ghostwriter it's just okay. a title that people go oh you'll help me write my book yes i can do that and i still do one to two books a year i was just doing a lot more than that um, but there was always so much more to it so i'm a co-developer of ideas, of messages, of models, of methodologies. So I work as an ally. And I mean, within a year of starting my business, I was working with New York Times bestselling authors, some of the world's top motivational speakers. So I was very blessed early on to work with incredible people. The creative process takes time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who are operating with big audience, their audience are saying, you know, okay, well, I want the, the next step to this concept, or I want the, the new new concept like so there's a lot of pressure to develop those ideas so that's where I come in as a co-developer of the idea and that was always the way in the book and I love writing what I call universal concepts with unique content so universal concepts are those that transcend all mediums so if we're starting in a book the concepts that we're creating you could go give a talk next week and you'd know the concept the story tied to it the how to's you know the questions however we phrase that based on your personal style and then you could develop that as a module in a course. So we're creating, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time you're creating a talk or an e-course or a book in the same series and the same message. So that's really what it was always about was this really strategic and creative process. And I'm also, I had an intuitive healing process, pro, um, <laughs> excuse me, an intuitive healing practice. So I bring that into my work. So it's about really tuning into you at the deepest level and helping you fully express all dimensions of your message. Because sometimes we don't even know that there's an extra dimension. I mean, I have clients who have their PhDs in management and they're like, I think my idea is near perfect. I've been working on it for 10 years, right? And we work together and all of a sudden they discover there's even more dimension. Mm. You know, the idea just got even better. So that's what this process is about. So now I'm doing that as a program, it's a message mastery program. So I take five clients on maximum at a time and work very closely as a co-developer of their models and their methodologies. So I'm working with my tribe, as I call them, are the redefiners. And I stress the defy as in challenging the status quo. So those who are redefining the way we do business and the way we see leadership to be heart-centered and people-centric. So, and that just stems from everything that I've been through personally. Like I have that business background, but when you shared hospital rooms with people who are dying and you've known great physical suffering, like this really is about operating from the heart. I'm serving you in helping you fully self-express and we're serving humanity in helping them to reach towards and step towards their full potential and making it easy for them. Even if your idea is revolutionary, we're making it relatable. Hmm. So how often do you find that some of your clients are actually resistant to self-expression and they're, they find it difficult to let go of the kind of like um, the story that's going on in their head about their limiting beliefs? Um, honestly, I think I have an energy about me and I actually had, had someone come to me. He's got a multiple seven figures 
your business. And he said, I have to tell you, I'm a little scared to work with you because people know I'm going to challenge them <laughs> to bring out everything that they have to say, because sometimes it's just been very pragmatic and there's not a lot of personal anecdotes or personal stories tied in. So I think those who are coming to me, I mean, if you read my content, you look at my website, you're like, all right, I'm in for like full self-expression here. So <laughs> most people who come to me are pretty open to that process. Actually, they're, I have to say my clients are beautifully open and it makes for such an incredible co-creative process mm. because they're open to expanding their ideas. They're open to challenging their ideas. So it's just, it's so wonderful to work with people who are so open-minded, both in their own ideas and what they can create for humanity. So it really is self-expression as service, communication as contribution at the highest level. Awesome. For people in the audience um, who might be sitting there thinking, well, that sounds absolutely fantastic. How can I start doing that? What's the first step down to, towards that path? What advice do you have for those people? I am working on some e-courses for, for those who are getting started as well. So oh, cool. they'll awesome. be able as soon as I can put them out. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe if someone's running across this video, you know, a few months or a year down the road, they'll, they'll be able to tap into those e-courses via my website. Um, but I really encourage people not just that story and strategy model is a great place to start because people are saying, you know, share your story, share your story. But I think it's so important. And, and please I've got three blogs on my website that have done well around the world, all about storytelling. Check them out. I'm putting out a booklet as well um, called Find Your Story. Uh, because our story is not what happened to us, right? It's about what we created based on what has happened. Mm. You're letting the story be the foundation and not the focus. It's a springboard, not an anchor, right? So in terms of where do these people start, share, share your story, but really that story and strategy have to go together. You want to give your audience those digestible nuggets of knowledge or wisdom, experiential knowledge, the knowledge you have gained from the unique composite of experiences that only you have had, right? That's why we all have a unique voice because nobody has had the set of experiences that you have had and the perspective on life that you have. That's where your value lies, mm. right? So share that, share the story, your personal story in a way that tunes into, you know, allows your audience to tune into you and you to them and creates this bond between you. And share with them the really simple strategies. We don't have to make anything overcomplicated. We can take the profoundly spiritual and ground it out. So it's so simple, right? And I mentioned like compassion and small action. Yeah. It's catchy, right? Yeah, but it's, that's just, it's step by step being compassionate with yourself and allowing yourself to take small action. Mm. If you want to get into the psychology and spirituality of that, we can do that, right? So you can have multiple layers to your principles, but they don't have to be complicated. Simple is welcomed in our world, right? There's a lot that's overcomplicated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, Jocelyn, yeah. this channel is all about trying to create holistic success in your life, not just finding success in one area like business or health or finances or career or relationships. It's actually about holistic success. Uh, and that's the message that, that I'm, I'm trying to spread. And that's what I'm interested in learning myself. So when I bring on a guest, that's one of my goals to try and kind of go in, inside their mind and find out how they created success in their life. So what elements do you attribute attribute your success in, in terms of obviously your health, because you bounce back twice from really serious illness um, in terms of your business because obviously you have done extremely well in business um, your relationships I mean you are connected with some really really amazing people um, at just absolute world-class motivational speakers like Les Brown um, and others um, and also the fact that you are making a massive impact in the world you are leaving behind a really powerful legacy and you're sharing those really deep, powerful ideas with others and help them, you know, essentially make their impact in the world. So mm -hmm. what are those core elements that allowed you to achieve all this? Yeah. The, the biggest thing is embrace your experiences, right? Mm -hmm. I, do, I do believe that life is our teacher, right? And if we can embrace and transform again, back to that meaning making, creating meaning, even when things don't make sense, if you can embrace your experiences and use them as fuel for something bigger, something bigger than yourself, right? That's where the power lies. It's almost like you're channeling your experiences through you. 
They were in the past, they fueled you, and now you're giving it outwards as this gift, as this legacy, as this contribution to humanity, right? That's, if we can just embrace what's happened, it doesn't mean that we're saying it was wonderful, it was all roses, no. It's about saying, it hurt like hell, <laughs> it wasn't fun, I wouldn't wish it on, upon anyone, but here's what I'm creating from it. Here's what I've learned. I would say like, tell our voice is, our, is, is sharing our gifts, passion, knowledge, and perspective to promote empathy, growth, and ease of life for others. Wow. So say that again, sharing our gifts, passion, knowledge, and perspective to promote empathy, growth, and ease of life for others. Think about it that way. Mm -hmm. That's bigger than you. Yeah. If you can take what you've learned from your experiences, embrace them and extract those lessons and make even one other person's life easier, that's an impact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's an impact. I mean, everything else from there is bonus. You go to hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or hundreds of millions, right? It's impact. But it's that word one person. Back when I began speaking, I used to say, if one person in the room came up to me and said, Jocelyn, my life was changed today. My work was done. The whole room didn't have to stand up. It was that one person. And that one person was why I was there, right? And that will multiply over time as you really hone your voice. You know, what do you stand for? Because I'm telling you, our experiences are gold, no matter how hard. No one has the composite of experiences that you have that shaped your perspective on life. We're interpreters of life, right? We're all experiencing the same, experiencing the same reality. But when you share your interpretation, you start to attract people that say, hey, wait, that makes sense to me. This has resonance. The way that you see life makes sense to me. It's helping me make sense of my own life. Hmm. we all have that ability we all have an audience no matter how big or small is like it company community family or humanity whichever one is most comfortable to you but we all have an audience that is so amazing I, I i love that and i love the fact you you dug really deep and broke it all down uh, absolutely wonderful just pure gold absolutely pure gold and as you were saying <laughs> talking about you know letting your experiences flow through you i i don't know why but the first picture that came to my mind was that of a prism mm, yeah beautiful yeah beautiful, right that, that and was you the, think first... the impact yeah yeah that was the first image that came to my mind as you were talking about it um and of the, the fact that you talk about you're embracing your experiences and, you know, kind of extracting meaning from each experience, you know, even though it was painful, but what meaning can you extract and how you can help others, you know, um, gain essentially perspective on their lives based on what you have learned from your experience. Um, I absolutely love that. I'm just wondering, Jocelyn, you have achieved so much and you are working on so many different projects and you are working towards leaving a really massive impact, making a really big impact and leaving a huge legacy. So are there any specific routines, rituals, habits that actually you practice um, that allow you to perform at your best and also to create all, all these amazing, amazing results? Yeah, yeah. There's there's one really simple thing that I speak about a lot, and that's creating space in our lives. Right? Mm. I'm talking about creating meaning, creating space is the other. And we and you and I were talking earlier about hustle. Yeah. Right. And the previous hustle in my life in the financial industry was the go 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 hustle. Right. Mm. My alarm went off every day. Six fifteen, I got up. I was at the office by seven thirty before there was any traffic on the road. I had all my work done. I was on the East Coast on Atlantic time. My work was done before anybody on the Pacific Coast even got out of bed. <laughs> So it was, it was like hustle in the form that we know it. And then things shifted after I got sick and mm -hmm. I don't use an alarm now. I get up with my natural state and I know like for those with kids, like they're often going to be your alarm, right? <laughs> they're going to get you up. But creating that space, I create that space in my world when I first wake up. I used to jump out of bed, get ready and go. I now might allow myself time to lie in bed and it's the most powerful time of my day. When that subconscious is still really active and the conscious mind is just waking up, same thing before you go to bed. And you really have this ability to channel and to download clarity. If you're working on you know, message or concept, it's how things fit together. It's the same thing, walking in nature, same thing, creating that space. Even if you can only create 20 minutes at a time, it's amazing what you can do 
when that mind is in, in go, 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 go state, it's just this ease and this clarity, even when you have a million things to do in every aspect of your life, just allowing your space, self space to breathe. You love to meditate, use meditation, you know, outside with children, lying in bed just after you wake up or before you go to sleep. That's, that's hugely powerful and it has been in my business. You know, people ask me, like, I can create 24-7, 365 for my own work, for clients' books, for clients' messaging. It's just this continuous download. Our messages don't come from us. They come through us. Mm -hmm. So you can rack your brain over and over and over and over and over again, and you're just going to get a headache, right? Yeah. But if you create space, all of a sudden you start having these ahas, these moments of clarity that become fluid. They, became, they become regular in your life. And it's just this flow, this flow of clarity. There, we're still going to have moments. Obviously, there's still going to be things in our world that happen that don't make sense. We're going to have moments of deep pain. You know, we're going to have moments of angst where it's like, can I get it all done? There's so much to do and balancing family and work and everything, finances. We're going to have our human moments. But allow yourself, start to carve out those special moments of space. It's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. Even if you're just sitting in that space observing yourself you know self-awareness is huge and you we talked about confidence you know yeah. just it, it helps so much in building that confidence and i don't think self self-awareness has to be any more complicated than self-observation right start to appreciate yourself we talked about looking back at your experiences and what you've done yeah. that you got from painful point a to today and going i did that mm -hmm. that was really hard it took a lot of courage and i did it like, yay me, <laughs> right? right? And then what are you going to do with that? How are you going to contribute that, right? With that revelation of like, wow, okay, I've got this, this power, this gusto, this message to share. How am I going to share that at words? You know, and writing is such a healing, healing medium. It's such a powerful tool. And we have this gift through the internet to start a blog in our free world, like yeah. freedom of expression, right? We, we're not maximizing our freedom of expression. A lot of times we're using it for negative. Don't stand against something, stand for something, right? Stand for the things that life has taught you, right? Because it's taught you those things for a reason. You are meant to communicate these on whatever level you're comfortable with. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So we, you mentioned confidence. Uh, so let's, let's go down there for a bit. For people who are in the audience and are kind of, reflecting on themselves right now and they're thinking well yes outwardly i do have this appearance I, I keep up this appearance that i'm confident but inside i'm not and i struggle and i have to work hard to generate this confidence and bring this every single day and that actually burns you out so what what can people do to make sure that they are able to not only generate great amount of confidence but maintain it yeah. And I'll, I'll preface this by saying, like, I understand at the deepest level, like I was bullied in junior high school. I used to come home every day with gum wood in my hair. Like you see all this, like, you know, like, and just spoken poorly about in front of everybody, like just, you know, in a way that I didn't believe in my own greatness early on mm -hmm. and had to learn that. And then having been sick, I mean, I had periods where I had no hair. I couldn't walk. I was facing debilitating fatigue. You want to talk about no confidence. Like there were times people would be like, oh, you're still beautiful. I'm like, no, let's be real about this. Like inside, yes. Outside, not so much. <laughs> you know, I was really real about it. Like I don't want to look in the mirror right now. That outward lack of confidence impacts, you know, how do you keep the confidence within? Self-awareness is everything, right? And like I spoke about having the people who are mirrors for you, you know, to, to share with you, to say like, you know, talk to people. If you're working through it and you're struggling with them, talk to them and talk through your experiences with them and people who are supporters, right? We want, as, as entrepreneurs, we want clients, we want collaborators, we need cheerleaders. You need to have your cheerleaders. So we don't need people who are gonna beat us down and criticize us and point out all the things we did wrong. We need people who are gonna be mirrors for us and say, wow, what you did was amazing. Do you understand how much strength it took mm -hmm. to do this? And, and get them to share with you what you mean to them. You know, if it's your, your close relationships, your friends, your clients, get them to tell you. Like I tell my clients, go get testimonials. You'll start to see themes, right? And it's one of the greatest things we can do to build confidence through that outside support as well. 
you start to see the same words appearing. You talked about catalyst and alchemist for me, right? You said it today, like I just gave you gold, right? I started to hear it over and over and over again. And I went, okay, this is what I am to you. Mm. So people will tell you and embrace that, you know, because this isn't lip service when people are telling you this over and over and over again, different people. So listen to what others are telling you. From the inside, again, spend that time observing and appreciating yourself and what you've done, how much strength has taken, how much awareness has taken, how many choices you made when it was hard to make them, you know, in those moments where it was so hard, we're talking about, you know, how do you decide to make a choice? You just made those choices. You made the choices that it took to get right here today. Yeah. Even if some things are hard, I'm sure some things are great. Some things that never were, right? And you've got children, and maybe you didn't have children 10 years ago. Think about the choices you made to get you here today, right? And having gratitude, not just for what's in your life, but for what you have created, what it took from within you to create that, right? That self-observation is so powerful. I've been very humble in my work. I mean, I, I can't tell you most of the books that I've written because I'm a ghostwriter, right? So it's a very selfless profession. So it's hard at times to like build the confidence and now sharing my own messages and being a teacher. You know, it's amazing to really hear the feedback and to step back and observe that and go, wow, okay, there's a real impact here. You know, to hear what you've said today, that's very meaningful to say, okay, like I'm being true to myself and you're telling me I'm getting chills. I'm feeling this. Yeah. Right. So yeah, give yeah. people a chance to feel you mm. and let them tell you, get, even if they're not outwardly, outwardly telling you, get their feedback. What does that mean to them? Mm. You, what are you feeling? How am I helping you? You know, and, and really like feel that within yourself. If you tell me, if you tell me I've created gold, what does that feel like for me? It feels like some kind of transformative process. And I can feel that in my gut, you know, in my solar plexus, I feel that like that transformative energy because that's what I've done in my experiences. There are correlations in our lives. And when I'm, when I'm writing others, especially their autobiographies and memoirs, I'm able to see the correlations between our lives. There are themes and trends. So you can start to see that if you observe and go, wow, like what I did at 20 and what I did at 45 are totally related. Yeah. They both showed that I had incredible courage, say. And you go, wow, that's definitely a pillar of what I stand for. And I think, and when we can base our contributions around those universal human values, whichever ones really that you represent at the deepest level, when we base our communication around that, you're guaranteed to have resonance, right? If I say the word courage or confidence or compassion to you, you go, yes, you're nodding your head, right? Yeah. yeah. They have resonance for it, right? We're always going to see value when we base our communication on human values, mm. right? So yeah. what human values do you stand for at the deepest level? What have been woven through your life? Those are confidence builders. You know, confidence may be one of them that you've built over time or you're still building and go help others develop it. If you're still in the process, it doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out when you start to go and help others because helping them will help you figure it out. Right. Great teachers like Simon Sinek and other great leaders say this exact same thing. If you help others solve, try and solve the problem you're trying to solve, you end up solving your problem. Yeah. yeah. It's amazingly powerful, but we forget that. We've got this persona that we have to have it all figured out when we can step out into the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, absolutely amazing, amazing stuff you, that you shared with us there. Um, very quickly, Jocelyn, I, I want to know, what are your main goals for 2018 then? So I, as I, said, I am working on an e-course um, to serve those who are starting out in terms of developing their universal concepts or their messaging that transcends across all platforms with ease and also how to share their stories. Um, I'm working on I'm getting my word out with, with more major publications. Um, as, as I mentioned, I've kind of been the ghostwriter, the behind the scenes one, behind some great messages. So now I'm getting my own out there as well, which feels really good. Um, so sharing my true voice with the world. Um, yeah, and just helping to serve world-changing game leaders at the biggest level in developing their models and their methodologies and their, and their messages. So really excited, um, a lot of great travel to work with a lot of great people all across North America. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a really exciting year, very grateful, uh, very blessed to 
have great conversations like this one and, and meet incredible people all the way. Beautiful. And Jocelyn, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. I'm conscious of your time. Um, but to be perfectly honest, I really don't want to get off this call. I want to stay on and, and, and carry on. It's, it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, but before, before we wrap up, how can people reach out to you and learn more about you? And uh, how can they help you right now? Uh, so everyone listening, please follow along on social media. It's at Jocelyn Duffy, and that's J-O-S-C-E-L-Y-N-D-U-F-F-Y. My website's jocelynduffy.com. Again, I'll say it's J-O-S-C-E-L-Y-N-D-U-F-F-Y. Um, and we referenced a couple blogs earlier on storytelling. Um, there's a whole lot more there. So please go check it out. Share your thoughts, your comments. If it has resonance with you. Um, and you can keep watch on my page for forthcoming e-courses. I'm putting out three booklets that I'm calling the Clarity Series um, within the next few months. So it'll be find your story, find your voice, and find your niche. So really helping those who are starting out, as you mentioned, so how do they get started in terms of sharing their story and sharing their voice with the world, whether you're doing that in the context of a business um, or outside. Awesome. Well, guys, there you go. All those links will be below in the description of the video. So you can hit those links, go and check out the website, the blogs and everything else. And I will highly encourage you guys to do so. Um, I just cannot even begin to explain how amazing this conversation has been for me. Um, it, it's been one of those things where, you know, I, I, a wrecking ball comes and just literally hits you in the face. That's what it actually <laughs> felt like. There were so many amazing concepts that we explored in this conversation. And to be honest with you, I was just absolutely blown away by Jocelyn's perspective, her depth of knowledge, and how she just, you know, linked everything together and broke it down for us. Um, I, I need to go over some of this stuff before because I don't think I can just grasp all of this in one go. I'm going to listen to this like after we, we stop recording. I'm going to start listening to this again. Just so powerful. And I will highly encourage you guys to go ahead and reach out to Jocelyn. She is absolutely incredible. And this is why I bring on these amazing guests so we can learn from them. And I, I, I'm sure that you found so much value in this conversation because I know I did. So please go ahead and share th this conversation with somebody who's close to you, somebody who you think can benefit from hearing these messages. And I will also really appreciate if you go ahead and let us know your thoughts, your aha moments from this conversation. What was your biggest takeaway? I think both me and Jocelyn would love to connect with you and know about what was your biggest takeaway from this whole conversation. And finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel because guess what? Otherwise, how else will you stay up to date with all of these awesome conversations and these amazing guests that are going to come and even help us learn more about how we can create holistic success in our lives. So with that, guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. Jocelyn, it's been an absolute pleasure. Can't wait to go for round two. All right. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Stay absolutely awesome. Hustle hard. And I will be catching you guys in the next.